expressing okay got it we start good evening people so today's class this is probably the third time i can taking this class is about the big five i don't have a presentation but most of you guys got some kind of idea about big five so i don't have to go to the details of it and i will share my screen and i will show oh, our study book where is it here okay you can all see my screen hopefully you can all hear me yes very good and i'm trying to see where to find you guys yes let me keep the participants on the side so i can see if somebody wants to raise a hand which never happens uh, okay enough so the big five model we have two models of personality which are uh, let's say uh, the most prominent ones that we have as of now many people have came up with different different uh, ideas in the past and all of them has been um, completely uh, sent to the trash can by the modern community our uh, syllabus does not cover a lot on that but in the current scenario i believe the the one which has stood the test of time is the big five model uh, i wouldn't say equally but something uh, let's say in promi prominence something which comes close to it is the the pen model from uh, our uh, beloved isunk uh, chap so big five and uh, pen model i will uh, touch upon both of them a little bit big five is the the topic for today so what is big five <clears throat> as you know um, personality has been a debate ongoing forever how is it uh, generated how is it to be measured how uh, what are the components of it etc 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 and behaviorist people have their own story to tell uh, which we have been listening to in the last few classes then we also have people um, other than behaviorist what do we have um, the people who scan the brain and find things like that I, I forgot the name of those category of people but anyway there are multiple theories around all these things so big five is a way of representing uh, humans personality in the most scientific way possible so what does it mean there are five dimensions of uh, one's personality which usually is <coughs> um, depicted in this uh, acronym called oceans or canoe o c e a n o c a n o e and usually our, our textbook only covers the canoe uh, ocean one but that's pretty decently enough same letters um, what are those letters they are not uh, something that's like a scale or something first of all all these are kind of spectrum values so every single man or woman have all these um, dimensions everyone will have some number of openness or in in oceans o c e a n i will go one by one o is openness o c c is conscientiousness not consciousness conscientiousness o c e e any volunteers what is e extroversion obviously and neuroticism yes. very good and o c e a a is for Agreeable. 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 Perfect. So, uh, have you changed this uh, the page or is it stuck in the? Uh, no, structure? no. I was just giving an introduction actually. Ah, okay. But again, uh, one thing is this unit actually refers to the same content over and over in different words. I believe whoever was paid by Igno for uh, preparing this unit, they went through different websites and copy pasted the same thing over and over. So the content is actually not a lot. That's why I'll be covering a little extra also. Uh, because other, otherwise it will become pretty boring pretty quickly anyway so we know all this but what are they uh, when you say for example um, openness what does it mean anybody volunteers openness to change openness to change 
Yes, in some aspect, but I'll, I'll come to that. I, I would say not exactly. Uh, but openness to change is also in there, but it also refers to things like uh, you can think, you can critically think, you are innovative, you are basically the intelligence factor. If you notice, there is nothing called intelligence in the big five, which is surprising, right? Because personality will should be having intelligence somewhere in there. And the openness is actually the intelligence uh, quotient. So each of these is not exactly the meaning of the English word that they portray. It's actually a little different. So when you say each of them, that is not specifically the word, it is actually a dimension. And I'll explain what that is. Before that, I'll explain how it was uh, derived. So let's say we start from lexical analysis, just like uh, Allport did for some other funny research. What was done is all the adjectives, etc., were thrown out to people, let's say, and we do a factor analysis. What is a factor analysis? When we say that, um, okay, let me go a little behind. The uh, In history, in uh, before psychology started, we know philosophy was the father and mother of all the sciences. And the one famous guy you would might remember from the uh, previous uh, generations is Socrates. And he was pretty interesting because he wanted to break down all the, the core complex ideas into smaller, minute, as minute as possible kind of elements. And uh, the story goes something like this. Socrates would just go into the market and pick on a guy one, well, let's say a very, very famous uh, soldier who just came back from a battle and he's uh, celebrated because he, let's say, killed 200 people or whatever. And he will start questioning that person. Why are you so happy? And he will say, I'm very proud. And he will say, why are you proud? What are you proud about? And he will say, um, because I have shown a lot of courage. Then Socrates would continue questioning, saying, uh, what exactly did you mean by doing something like something courageous then he will say i went into this uh, if the fort was so big why are rushed in and then then socrates would say isn't it very stupid to go into a fort knowing that you would get killed then this guy will slow down and he will say that okay i did not do a stupidity i knew that let's say uh, the dragon in the seventh hill and remove the fort now, dragon in the seventh hill, uh, I, I, I kind of knew I can kill him. That's why I went. If it was a huge dragon who will definitely eat me, I wouldn't go there. I agree with you. That would have been stupidity. Then Socrates would say, if you knew that you can kill this dragon, and it's actually a very small kind of a little dragon without any fire, why are you so happy about it? Then he will break down his pride into the courage. Now he'll break down the courage into a little bit of a knowingness of the actual situation. You knew dragon's powers. You know you have a huge sword. You know your strength. So your knowingness. And then probably he'll break it down into further smaller and smaller pieces, elements of personality. So I'm trying to say is the, this old story, you would have heard this uh, trait of Socrates. Eventually that got him into trouble because people started getting really irritated by his behavior. He did it in an ongoing purpose every single day in the market and he was poisoned at the end as usually happens with people like me and so Socrates. So, so he did the same thing. He was breaking things down into the, let's say, the root behaviors, behavioral structures of complex elements. So courage, I pride, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, might be like bigger words. The underlying structure might be very few one or two items, like knowledge of other person's thingy, uh, power, strength, knowledge of your own strength, and maybe imagination to make up a story and make a small goat with one horn as a huge monster with fire in his eyes or something like that. So one guy goes to Seventh Hill, kills a goat, comes back celebrates as if he's the most courageous person in the world and he's very proud of it. Socrates goes and makes the person, you know, realize that maybe it's not that much or maybe he's thinking too much or et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. 
break, breaking it down the complex structures into the smallest psychological elements. So the kind of study that is in this particular example for like where Socrates did is breaking down of complex things into smaller ones. The same ones can be done similarly for any other complex uh, phenomena. For example, EQ that celebrated, you know, but non-existent um, behavioral structure could be easily proven to be some parts of actual IQ, which is openness. And uh, let's say some part of neuroticism, which is like your way of uh, jumping out and running around for no reason. I mean, I'm just using my own words, but EQ does not really exist as an individual or in independent quality or quantity, something like that. But it's a combination of these base uh, elements. So uh, these five elements, which are actually basic ones, like primary colors, can be combined and you can create any uh, specific um, behavioral sector out of it. So how were they derived? By doing factor analysis. And what is that? So you give a big list of questionnaire to, uh, let's say, a thousand people. I was actually dancing around a lot and hoping you can see me, but luckily you could not. So you missed a lot of dancing there. So if you want me to stop, if you have a question, please raise your hand. I'm looking at the chat box to see if somebody's raising hands. So how do you do a factor analysis? By giving a huge questionnaire to a lot of people from a big inventory and trying to see which all of these traits or combination of traits vary in a very correlated fashion. For example, if you are, um, outgoing, if you are happy, those two, you can say they, they vary together. We, a person is outgoing, usually means that he's also more happier than compared to a person who is less outgoing, um, kind of an introvert, and who doesn't really think a lot, something like that. So you know that now there is one dimension which says this thing keeps going up, 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 correlation, remember previous classes, the other thing is going up, up, up. That means all the things that goes up, up, up together. Let's say you have a, a 10,000 question questionnaire. You find that 2,000 of those qualities always go correlatedly in a correlated fashion. Means all of them together to tie up in a single dimension. Call it something. And that's openness. What is openness in this? all the intelligence, your explorative nature, your courage, a little bit of that would be probably all that combined will be your openness. And uh, give me one second, guys. Okay, I'm back. So that's about openness. What is the other one? O C E A N, conscientiousness, which is very, very important for. Is there any question about all openness? Anybody? Or whatever stories I told so far? Any questions so far? Nope. Great. Okay. Conscientiousness is a very celebrated and very important feature. Because, give me one second. Sorry, guys, I just reached so little arrangements happening at home. Sorry about that. Okay, conscientiousness is an element which is, let's say, one of the biggest predictors of uh, people's success in the corporate. First one is definitely IQ. Across the board, all selection procedures in any of the government and non-government organizations always follow uh, IQ as the first predictor of success or productivity from any person in any organization. You probably know it already. And second one is conscientiousness. And what does that mean? Your dedication to your job, how, how much you are... Uh, ready to accept responsibilities, 
how much you are uh, going to see uh, them through. You will make sure that things are done at on time and the projects are closed on time. You want to, that kind of qualities all together uh, are put in a single dimension called conscientiousness. And um, that is probably the second biggest predictor of uh, success in a corporate. And that's second item that would be considered when you are actually doing an interview in case you are using Ocean's model, which nowadays companies do. And uh, there are rules around not using IQ in certain spaces and spectrums across the globe because uh, that would be inhumanitarian to knock off people from a job opportunity saying that your IQ level is too, too low. But surprisingly enough, uh, there are rules even in US uh, Army that below certain IQ level, I believe is 65, uh, you are too incapable of handling a gun. So you will definitely not be taken into um, army and if you're get you're supposed to get into special uh, arm like forces like seals you ha definitely have to have a bigger number in your iq um, arsenal i don't know the number i don't remember the number but th there are numbers like that which they do use and you all probably know that for iq iq is again we are coming to the openness part uh, can be measured iq is one of those dimensions uh, you know that the beginning of those measurements itself was uh, done during the Second World War time when we were recruiting so many people in, in the British Army, right? So I was coming back to uh, conscientiousness. It is the second biggest factor. And just one more thing I want to touch upon is the grit. The grit that was invented by a lady, I forgot her name. You can look her up in, uh, let, let's look it up right now because it's a very interesting story. Uh, this lady came up with a new element called grit and she said that is the biggest predictor of success in a corporate grit invented by Angela Duckworth yes Angela Duckworth was the one who invented this uh, grit and she was awarded uh, so many accolades by many corporates because they thought okay we finally have something that can be measured and that can be used for selection process of employees. Then later it came to know that it's nothing but conscientiousness because the correlation was found to be more than 80%. And that's such a huge correlation where like in, in any statistical studies, getting anything beyond 70 is uh, probably the best correlation you can ever get. Similar to, uh, let's say IQ. IQ a correlation is actually something like 70. So if you're running two IQ tests between two people, and the chances are 70%, only 70%, 30% the other way around. Then in the next test, the same result, comparative results can be achieved by a different IQ test. So if uh, two of you guys are taking uh, IQ test number one, um, you got scores, A is bigger than B. Again, you take another, another IQ test from the same inventory, but a different set of questions, chances are that 70% of the chances are that the, the scores will be same. But if you do the same thing repeatedly for 100 times, 30 times, possibility is that the, the flip side might happen, the, the other person might win. So, so that is actually the best predictor because that is the most stable reader in, in any of these uh, dimensions. For any um, numeric value you can get out of uh, a person, IQ is actually the most stable number. Okay, so I told you about grit. <clears throat> grit is nothing, but it was, uh, was later found out to be uh, matching with uh, conscientiousness to a huge correlation like 80%. And it was altogether dismissed by the psychology word saying that is not a new um, trait. It's actually one of these three traits. Cool, so we covered um, O and C. Any questions so far? Three, two, one, going, gone. Okay, E, extroversion. I believe most of you know uh, what extroversion is. Uh, let's again, when I keep giving these informations the way I know them, uh, it's also important that we look at what is given in the IGNO book. So, big five in cattle variable list. Now this will also give you a little bit of uh, 
Okay, let's read a little bit from here, I believe. Definitions, we have covered that decently well. So it kind of gives you um, how much of those were used, how they came to this, et cetera, et cetera. I'm not familiar with these numbers. Uh, this, these are the kind of things that is already covered by yesterday's class. So I skipped over those. Okay, so we'll go with uh, O, openness, yes. Openness experience, this is also called intellect or intellect imagination. So openness is not only openness, it's also intellectual, like how IQ, et cetera, imagination, creativity, et cetera, all that comes into openness, okay. Uh, C is conscientiousness, this includes states like organized, thorough, planful tendencies. So uh, if you are a lazy, um, couch guy, then this is probably what is uh, missing in you the most. Extraversion this is also called uh, surgency. So uh, the, the broad dimension of extraversion encompasses specific traits like talkative, definitely, energetic and assertive. Now, one interesting thing might be, this actually comes in the pen model also. I'll touch upon pen model. So extraversion and neuroticism also is shared in the pen model. Uh, and uh, PEN, and there is also a psychotic uh, dimension in the pen model. So psychotic extroversion and neuroticism, those are the three ones in pen model. So extroversion is, uh, you kind of know, talkative, energetic, and assertive are the qualities of an extrovert. More specifically, this includes characteristics such as uh, excitability, sociability, talkativeness, assertiveness, and high amount of social expressiveness. Okay, OCEA, agreeableness in general is like how much you kind of a good guy you are, nice guy or something like that. Uh, altruistic, um, kindness, you try to parry away a conflict. That would be a simple way of defining what agreeableness is. The more agreeable you are, that means you would align with that other person's wavelength in, in, in common parlance. So, sympathetic, kind, affectionate, trusting, altruistic, kind, affectionate, those are all agreeableness dimension. Uh, pretty easy to understand. Uh, why I'm going like this now is again, those are the big ones are covered. Uh, these are little ones, we can, we'll touch upon those more. So if you have any questions, please keep raising your hands. Agreeableness, pretty easy and simple one, I, believe, I would say, OCE, a N neuroticism again neuroticism also comes in both pen model and uh, oceans. This is sometimes uh, reverse called as uh, like it is a negative emotion, negative dimension where all the things negative like anxious, uh, anxious, moodiness, irritable, uh, emotional instability, etc., instability, etc. All that is collectively put in this dimension. So it's not like a, a single item, but definitely uh, all the all the negative aspects of uh, personality most of them are collectively put here so if you are anxious and then let's say you are a little um, openness if a person is high on neuroticism and high on um, imagination for example he will probably start you know building his own worlds in his mind and he will uh, you know Get. So what I'm saying is this: the combination of this kind of traits or which, which of these are high for a person that gives uh, him the kind of, uh, you know, his interaction with the, with the environment depends on uh, if he or she is high or low or medium in any of these uh, five dimensions. Okay, that's a good coverage of uh, oceans. Now, one second, there are a couple of ways to measure oceans. So let me go there. Big five theory, again, big five, big five model, um, description, explanation, all these are actually different ways of saying or calling the same thing. Uh, Liu Goldberg is the one who coined the word Big Five. That's probably uh, important. Other than that, one second.
Mm. Okay, sorry about the delay. Okay, descriptions and explanations, we covered it. So as I told you, this is like repeated multiple times uh, from different places. And a lot of names that I don't usually copy. Uh, advantages of big file structure is actually interesting. So let's cover this a little bit. Social investment theory is uh, one of the theories that is proponed recently, not very recently, but okay, let's, let's cover this a little bit. Okay, the big, big five structure has advantage of everyone being able to understand definitions and meanings used in describing this concept. So it's pretty simple. There's no heavily uh, involved uh, jargons in big five. Several of the dimensions of the big five, especially extraversion and neuroticism have been explained both from physiological and mechanistic perspectives. I have actually no clue what that means. Mechanics, anybody knows, please chime in. In one sense, Big Five differentiates domains of individual differences that are similar surface manifestations. The dimensions actually means similar is what I was talking about. Uh, everything that goes together hand in hand, they're all put in a single dimension. The Big Five structure is a major step ahead in that it captures the commonalities among most of the existing systems of personality description and provides an integrative um, descriptive model. Big five theory includes a number of propositions about the nature, origins, and developmental course of personality traits, and about the relation of traits to many of the other personality variables mentioned earlier. Five-factor theory presents a biological account of personality traits in which learning and experience play little, if any, part in influencing big five. This is important because Five factor theory presents a biological account. So basically, we are saying that everything is coming from the genes. And the way learning and experience, the environmental effects, play little uh, role in a person's traits, which is not exactly true. We also say that they evolve, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Five, uh, five factor theory is not the only theoretical account of big five. Other personality psychologists have proposed that environmental influences such as social roles combine and interact with biological influences in shaping personality traits. So this is like something we discussed yesterday, something that you bring and then something evolves out of whatever you bring from your genetic structure. It is presented into an environment which interacts with you. So you have a set biological structure, but once you are born and you start interacting with the world with your inbuilt structure, the expressions change. And that's how the outside experience of your behavior is going to be. So it's, it's not exactly because it's not saying that it can never change. The expressions can vary depending on the, um, the influence of the environment. Such as social roles combine and interact with the biological influences in shaping personality traits. For example, Brian Roberts has recently advanced the interactionist approach under the name social investment theory. So social investment theory says how, how the personality is shaped up from the big five, from, from the person's biological structure, continuing to his interaction with the environment. Finally, it is important to note that big five are used in many areas of psychological research in ways that do not depend on specific propositions of any theory. For example, the interpersonal perception research, the big five as a useful model for organizing people's perceptions of one another's personalities. I have argued definitely whoever copied this did not really care to you know, make those changes. So I don't know where from where this is copied, but whoever wrote those have argued that the big five are best understood as a model of reality-based per, uh, person perception. In other words, it is a model of what people want to know about one another. Okay, Srivastava is the one who is saying that. So basically it's how one person sees the other person. Okay, regardless of whatever you endorse the particular theory of personality traits, it, will, it is still quite possible that you will benefit from measuring and thinking about the big five in your research. 
big five uh, inventory is a little important so i would uh, instead of talking about it i will show you how it looks like so uh, no no sorry 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 thing thing and i need to show you here so this is from um, the place that they have mentioned in this they have given where to look for this uh, oliver jones lab website so there are, there are few few inventories which can be used to measure big five big five inventory is one of them and then another one is neo ffi uh, there are a bunch of them and we can create our own if it comes to that so just for the sake of again all these names etc i don't really go with that but just to, to give you a gist of how, how it looks like looks like something like this i am someone who all these questions and you had to give one two three four five starting from strongly disagree to strongly agree we had done this before in one of our experiments about the family structures i believe so the the questioning keys and how we mark them i believe you guys are aware of it outgoing sociable how are whatever then compassionate has source card so you can see that the questions are all definitely mingled up jingled up all all oh, it's not collective it's not like all the openness questions together etc uh, in any inventories there will be some questions which are not representing any of them they are uh, for let's say validation questions if if the person is bluffing they will give wrong answers to the, those questions so some questions will be uh, about each of the dimensions if there are 200 questions 40 each would be for all the five dimensions one by five each but among them there will be like few questions which are not for the inventory at all just to see if the person is actually uh, being honest or not so this these are the questions has an uh, I, I am the person who rarely feels excited of eager so again you can say it might be about introvert uh, introversion uh, it could be also about neuroticism if you get excited it could be also neuroticism dimension um, if you go strongly agree on i get excited that could be that indicating neuroticism also so it might not be exactly what you think it is so it's not just one question but a combination of probably 11 17 and 28 that gives you some kind of a scale for a specific dimension that's what i'm trying to say cool any questions so far great no questions okay now we'll go for uh, again see the the same thing has been repeated multiple times extremely uh, irritating this will help us a little bit so let's go through the important characteristics of big five first the factors are and are dimensions not types so people vary continuously on them so it's, it's a spec it's a it's a spectrum dimension so it's like you are too low on it or low on it or medium or high or extremely high on it second the factors are stable over a over a 45 year period or even throughout your lifetime this is very important because nothing stays as like you know if you, if you think about yourself 10 years back and now you are probably a different person so to say that something in personality stays consistent over 40 45 years of time and this has been observed continuously is a, a huge thing in any any of these uh, psychology measurements um, third the factors and the specific i mean these, these are the kind of things that indicates that the importance and the actual claims that big five makes are definitely true so big five seems to be the real prime colors of personality because all these uh, things um, third the factors and the specific fa facets are heritable genetic very important i guess and the kind of points to the kind of uh, irritating fact that the personality that we that, that we exhibit is genetic means what uh, you definitely can alter it vary it you can be a good person but kind of nature versus uh, nurture it actually 
largely you know jumps over the show, uh, over the wall to um, the other side the nature side so you came to this world carrying a personality you can evolve it or you can have different expressions expressions of it but however the interactions of the environment helps you build a better version of you you are still kind of limited by your basic genetic structure so that's i found this particular part important and the factors probably have adaptive values in uh, prehistoric environment so it is adaptive it's not set in stone kind of rules the factors are con uh, are considered universal having been recorded in languages as diverse as german and chinese so so the studies that were conducted that i mentioned about the correlation of different different dimensions they were done across the uh, across the board where uh, um, gender differences or uh, social differences or linguistic differences any kind of differences were all uh, varying for example if you go across india you have so many languages so many cultures so many food habits uh, so many ways of treating people then you go to us then you go to europe then you go to all sorts of uh, middle east then you go where so these studies were done around the globe uh, to reach into this uh, correlation studies for big five and many people have tried to apply and uh, run these um, studies in very unique part of the world hoping to find kind of a hole in the whole uh, you know um, theory but wherever they went with the uh, um, i mean did the experiments it always came out to be these uh, five factors or five dimensions those are not factors dimensions and it's also i would like to again add a couple of things that in some cultures it's seen that some of these uh, elements particularly the uh, let's say openness and neuroticism if i remember right i think extroversion and neuroticism a couple of them could be missing for example if you go to the buddhist and the jain uh, sanyasin kind of the kind of monks and all that they might be missing the n factor they are meditating all the time and uh, they don't probably have you know time for the end factors that kind of dimensions or they see to that that life mission is to eliminate end factors from their whole uh, way of living so some cultures miss one or two of the factors that doesn't mean that the theory doesn't hold good for them uh, even their personality that is ex exhibited uh, can be broken down to you know any of them uh, remaining four factors if one of them are missing okay so this universal uh, knowing one's placement on the factors is useful for insight and improvement through therapy so if you know that uh, therapy actually involves a lot in the modern therapy there, there are various ways of uh, doing therapy and many people do kind of grandma therapy but scientifically if you break down Uh, any issue then you usually do a big five analysis and uh, for example one one very important thing should be long term predictors of marriage success for example is how close you are uh, in all the five factors so if you want a person a marries person b uh, five factors five factors uh, in extroversion if the person is extremely no low and the other person is extremely high won't go too far so things like that uh, joint ventures just like the one like, just like marriage etc so these play a, a big role in measuring the long time success of this kind of things and uh, individual traits like iq um it kind of predicts long term success of a human over let's say 45 years time Uh, pretty pretty decently pretty accurately so let's say a person is a millionaire uh, but iq level is too low other person is a little bit of a you know low on um, money in the initial let's say 10 years but his iq is extremely high he said that is studied and proven that by when he said proven is like numbers shows that by the time they reach 45 
the IQ guy usually overtakes the the wealthy guy. So these are predictors of long time, long term um, success or uh, you no know, performance of uh, different aspects of personality and your um, life also. Okay, that's pretty much what we have. All these are li little, little, little bitty things that's not of much value. Um, yeah, again, they have given it again. Uh, it's a little confusing to go to the unit because use the same thing from different people again and again. But I, I believe I have covered it decently well. Any specific questions that I might be able to address? The unit is over. What is this lexical lexical term is all about? 